This is Wildcat Dojo Conversations. Hi, and welcome back. Sensei Michelle here. I don't know what number we're on exactly, but today we are sitting with... Welcome to Wildcat Dojo Conversations. Sensei J. The voice of our show. <laughs> that was awesome. And Sensei J is a karate black belt in Goju, receiving his black belt from Master Collegiate in... Uh, I think 1991 or 92. Nice. Not even this millennia. Wow. And he's an all-around great karate person and teacher of his own right. Of course, Landon's here. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. And Sensei Jackie. Hey, nice to see you here today. Today, we're going to talk about Master Collegian. And before we begin, I want to say that it is my intention to not paint him as a saint, because everybody sitting at this table will say he was not that. He was not a saint. He was a well-rounded man. Who lived in the moment. A podcast either prior to this or after this, we're going to tackle a subject called Wabi Sabi. You can look that one up on Google and get ready for us. It's a philosophical idea, and it is about imperfection. Yes. That is the basis of Wabi Sabi. And so this is a great precursor or postscript for that podcast. It'll be fun. They'll connect together nicely. When I first got the idea to do this, was, which was before we were on the air. That's right. My, I, was, I knew I wanted to do one on Master Collegian before I was even on the air. I sent out a couple of emails asking for some input on working with Master Collegian and so forth. And I only got one letter. The letter I received was from Tracy. And I thought it would be nice for her to start us out. It is so hard to be brief when talking about Master Collegian, says Sensei Tracy, back in October. He was larger than life and unique in so many ways. When he entered the dojo, or in any room for that matter, there was a presence about him that was almost electric. And I think we'll all agree that that was true. Sure. <laughs> His energy encompassed everyone in the room, inviting them to share in the knowledge that he was offering. When asked what he did for a living, Sensei would reply, I make real men and women. A real man or a real woman, in his opinion, was a person who not only acquired the confidence that comes along with years of martial arts training, but also who lived his or her life with honor, humility, and perhaps most important, accountability. There was no room in the dojo for excuses, and if training carries over into everyday life, as it is meant to do, no excuses there either. Yes. He used many tools in the dojo to accomplish this goal and many methods of teaching. The people who trained with him in his early years remember his hardness. Those who stuck it out had really proven their mettle and their desire. He was fond of saying, I'm not going if I can't have fun. Yes. And that is true. I can't even count the amount of times he and I said that to each other as we were walking out the door to head out to and he had fun. some obligation. <laughs> he did have fun. That's what he would reply when he was questioned about his sometimes surprising antics. This idea was a huge takeaway for me, says Sensei Tracy. There is no doubt that all of us have places to be and things to do that we dread. But applying Master Collegian's sentence, it doesn't mean that we shirk our responsibilities or our obligations, as he would have called it, but that we approach our duties with the intention of having fun. Fun is contagious. This is one small reason of many why Master Collegian was so loved and revered. So that was a really nice way to start things out, right? Yes. Okay. Now, who wants to talk about it? I'll talk about it. I agree with Sensei Tracy. When Master Collegian walked into the room, you felt the energy. Um, and I'm not just talking about a room full of karateka. I'm talking about boarding a small airplane with him. Everybody was involved. Everybody was laughing. And the trips I took with Master Collegian are, are unforgettable. I mean, going to a McDonald's with him was an adventure. <laughs> going on a hike on the Appalachian Trail was an adventure. Visiting downtown Demopolis, Alabama is a memory that will never be forgotten. Shout out to Richie Ionelli. Can I just say when you're driving in the car with him and he would grab the steering wheel to turn and look in the back seat? Did any of you guys ever have that happen to you? Well, <laughs> driving across Alligator Alley one time to a tournament on the West Coast, Sensei DeVoe had rented a big Lincoln or a Cadillac. And, of course, Sensei wanted to drive. 
before we got on the alley, we had to stop at McDonald's and Sensei got some type of little vanilla thing with a plastic spoon. Now he's going down the alley. I didn't even want to look at the speedometer. <laughs> and he's driving. Gotcha. And he's got one hand on the wheel. And like Sensei Michelle says, he's talking to the people in the back seat. Every now and then he'd reach down with a hand and get a, a, a dip of ice cream. <laughs> it was a white knuckle trip for me. <laughs> we had a lot of those over the years. We did. Safety was not his big priority. No, um, <laughs> not at all. And, and also, you will remember the time we were coming off the Appalachian Trail and he had a rental car. Oh, gosh. Yes. And it was downhill uh, the whole way. That was a little more than white knuckle. Yes. <laughs> a lot of memories. And again, everything was an absolute adventure with him. If you were around him, you would say, this person really knows how to enjoy life. And he did. Unfortunately, it was at the cost of a few more grays in some people's hair. Let's put it that way, right? Oh, it yes. was at the cost of that. But it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you say now in hindsight, but I was in the car a couple of times with you, so I know what you were saying, <laughs> and it's not, it's bleep, bleep, bleep well, on the air. If asked, would I do it again? And I go, no, I'm a little bit wiser now. No, I won't. <laughs> that was a good one. My experience with um, Master Collegian was that I had been in karate for about a month, perhaps, and there was an adult Shi'i competition one night, and I had been in class but had not met Master Collegiate. My sensei, Sensei Michelle, had talked about him, and I was really thinking maybe he'll come to the Shi'i. I didn't know then that his presence was not everything. Anyway, I went, and I was looking around and watching people compete, and I kept thinking, I wonder if I could figure out who Master Collegian would be. And then I looked over to the side and I saw, I don't even think I, it was a person. It was like energy personified. <laughs> and I walked over and I said, excuse me, sir, are you Master Collegian? And he kind of looked at me but said something like, yes, I am. Like, so what? I said, well, my teacher, Sensei Michelle, just thinks you're the best. And he said, you have a great teacher. <laughs> and from then on, um, in his presence, I was always excited to be there. And you know what? I'm going to jump in here and say, what about the first beach workout? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> when Jackie, Jackie, what, you couldn't have been in more than a two-striper when he took us to over to Dania Pier in South Florida, which on one side is the Atlantic Ocean, but on the other side is this really terrible, shallow, messy trinkle of the intercoastal. Yes. Yeah, it's just a little offshoot where old boats go to die. That's right. Go ahead. Pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't go in the ocean for some reason. The, the, I don't know if it, maybe there were jellyfish, jellyfish, which would have just been so much better. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> but this isn't going well. <laughs> so he, he decided that the adults would go into the intercoastal. Well, it wasn't really the intercoastal. We're into that little that nasty little canal. canal that had, it really had to, yeah. I, I don't really know what it was, but it was breathing yes. things. And there were barnacles. And no shoes. No, of course there were no shoes. <laughs> and we had to do all sorts of put your head underwater. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ki underwater and pray that nothing falls in your mouth. <laughs> and, it was so gross. And, and there was this sense of the source I had planned for us to have a relay where the adults stood one behind the other, kind of planted down. And the person at the end had to walk on the shoulders of everyone up towards the front, then jump off and jump back in the water. So by the time we were finished, we were laden with everything possible in that canal. Your beach workouts are not like that. <laughs> it was, it, I don't think I can ever forget those moments. Mr. Landon, you're up. So I've been in karate for seven years. So by the time that I got a little bit older and when I started going out more to things, since I'd already gotten more sick. But the last memory that I have is we were at a tournament and I remember he walked in um, and he gave me his coffee and he said, drink it, young man, drink it. I was like, no, sensei. I, and that, I, I was like, no, sensei, I don't drink coffee. And he said, drink it, young man, drink it. And he handed it over to me, and I was holding it. 
and one of the senseis walked up and they were like, no sensei, he doesn't drink coffee. And that was, that was like a very happy moment. And that was one of my last memories of him, which is a good one. Another memory that I have in this one, this one sticks. I was actually looking at some old pictures the other day. When I first competed with the bow, which is one of our weapons, as a three stripe, so I was still very young. Okay, I have to interrupt and say that's adorable because you're 12, right? <laughs> well, I was younger. In... Are you 12 in 2019? Now, or are you 13 already? No, I'm 12 in, in 2020. So still you're not, the, just be clear on this, folks. This is the clarity of an 11-year-old talking. It's scary. You can see he's going to be a broadcaster one day. Thank you. I know. I'm so sorry I interrupted, but you're doing bow and you're out of Shia. I'm doing bow, and in the middle was Master Collegian. And for the people that have never seen him, he's sitting there with his legs spread apart, and he has his hands by his stomach, and he's just, like, towering over you. And you just he, you just look, like, into his eyes, and it was just, it was really... Intimidating. Was really intimidating. Yeah. I agree with that. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm going a whole nother way from you guys. And, and so maybe it's going to be pulling on your heartstrings. You'll see what happens when we get there, okay? Yes. Uh. First off, I want to say that in other podcasts, I have told you that we were together for 37 years. That's a lot of water under a lot of bridges. And we had a lot of fights, not physical fights, but argument over the years, a lot of them. And sitting here, I remember this moment with such clarity, but I have no idea what this particular fight was about which is interesting, isn't it? Yes. Because I've brought that up in other podcasts, how these things that seem so intense when they're happening to you, the part you take away with you is not that ridiculousness of whatever the argument was about. Uh. It's something completely different. So he got on me for something, and I said us, and went home and, and sorted it through it in my head, and I was ready to come back and talk about it. So I called him up, I created a lesson in the warehouse, and I drove out. And when I walked in the warehouse... And we courtesy bowed in. I sat down in the chair and I said, I just want you to know before I start talking about this that I am 100% sure that I am going to cry. And I want you to know that that doesn't mean that I'm not still mad because I am still mad. And he looked up from the desk and looked me square in the eyes and he goes, me too, honey. And within 10 minutes of this conversation, we were both weeping. I mean, so much water coming out of so many eyes. And another person might say that, you know, a man wouldn't cry because it's not masculine, but he always cried. He didn't have a problem with this. There's so many things we can take away from any time you spent with Master Collegian. But tell me what you think of this. one. When you first meet somebody and you have love-like feelings for them, like a person would towards their sensei, it's admiration. They're on a pedestal and everything is so glowing. And then someday, just like happens from a teenager to a parent, they fall from that pedestal. And then a person, in this case, me towards Master Collegian, goes through a stage of finding their own way at the judgment of this other person. And then if you stay with that person through all the thick and thin of it, as we did through all those years, you not only love that person for all that's right about them, you don't just love that person in spite of all that's wrong with them. But it's almost because of all their quirks that your love runs so deep. That's what I think. What do you guys think about that? I I agree. I was 35 years old when I started karate. And and one of the reasons I started, well, my sons were taking it. But I I would talk to Sensei before class, before I even got karate. And he'd be outside the class and talk to me while the class was going on. And I said, this is really an interesting human being, right? Right. I would tell people about him. I said, if, if you saw this man walking down the street and you had no idea who he was and you looked in his eyes, you would know that there's something here or a line that you probably did not want to cross with him. Yes. And looking in his eyes, if you've ever looked or been up close to a hawk, look at those piercing yeah, eyes. I agree with that. But behind those eyes, like Sensei Michelle was saying, the love he had for his students, unbelievable. And, and I can hard to remember a phone call or a conversation ending with him not saying, I love you, man, with a hug. 
and he meant it. And on that note, that is because, and we've talked about this a ton of times throughout the, this first a dozen, I'll call it, podcasts, that's because both the love and the ability to say no stemmed from his chi line. And it's his chi line that came out in those eyes. See what oh, I mean? Oh, yes. agreed. Where are we? Oh, okay, so we're going to finish up on a note where I'm going to tell what I think is a pretty funny little story um, that does depict everything we've talked about where Master Collegian is concerned. So it was one of the last times that Master Collegian sat in front of a class of 25 or so people talking before he was too ill. And we were talking about the will to act. People were just talking back and forth. He was talking to them back and forth. And he said, and this has a cuss word in it that starts with the letter F. So I'm going to say mess instead of that bad word. And he sat in that chair and he leaned back in that chair and he turned his watch the way he always did when he was going to say, in his words, a gem. And he said, well, I may be old and I may be fat and I may be ugly, but I wouldn't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's a really nice way to remember him, isn't it? Oh, so yeah. that that, just, and that is the essence of him. I agree. Every bit of it. I agree. But what I hope here is that we have not painted a picture of Master Collegian as this perfect thing, because that's not who he was. But he was strong, he was passionate, and he was an exceptional martial artist. He dedicated his life to it. And his memory and spirit will, will be with us for a long, long time. And generations after us, because yes. even though yes. they won't get to meet him and get a picture like you did, Landon, or somebody else who was you know, young there when he was first getting sick, we talk about him all the time, and yeah, I'm sure all the dojos do. And and because of his energy, he is alive in all of our hearts, almost like sitting next to us right now at the table. Well, like we carry our parents in our hearts, too. Exactly. Yes. And other people we've loved. Yes. All right, so everybody gets to say goodbye. Start us out. Set the voice of the Wildcat Dojo. <laughs> Wildcat Dojo Conversations voice. This is the end of Wildcat <laughs> Dojo Conversations. For today. <laughs> Say goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye. See you soon. Bye, everybody. See you later. Good night. We're signing off for today. Hey, I'm back. In November, a couple months ago, Sensei Lydia, Sensei Jackie, and I taped a few gems, to use Master Collegian's word, about him. I'm adding them here because I believe they're a really comfortable fit, and I hope you agree. Kalichin is spelled K-E-L-L-J-C-H-I-A-N, in case you want to Google him. We're going to start with you, Sensei Jackie. Master Kalichin had been given two different karate names from his sensei, Peter Urban, someone else whom you may uh, Google if you like. The two karate names were The Rock and The American Bushido. He was the rock. He was enduring. He was strong. He was steadfast, a model for his students, and he was always there when he was needed. The American Bushido, Bushido meaning the way of the warrior, really reflected the way he lived because he lived his entire life as a warrior. You know what I'm sitting here thinking as you're talking? I wonder if his first Karate name, The Rock, was given him to him by Sensei Hess. Oh, I wonder if we could find out. Sensei Hess, if you're listening, will you tell us? Correct please? us, please. And also, a real quick thing, your karate name is given to you by your teacher to reflect your characteristics. And it's not usually given right when you become a black belt. It's usually given five, maybe seven years later. What do you think, Sensei, Lydia? Master Collegian was an awesome martial artist and it was a pleasure knowing him and being able to just spend time with him he was so energetic and so passionate about the martial arts he actually spent a decade or more with master joe hess who is a unique martial artist in his own right in that time he and sensei hess have traveled the world teaching police officers and also doing full contact fighting they were very, very well known. He has written many books, which also can be found on Amazon. And you can check that out for yourself. Here's a little aside that I know both of you know. He and um, Master Hess and Ron Russell were on the cover of Black Belt Magazine one year. Yes. Oh, yes, I remember that. And, uh -huh. and, and you can find it. 
by, yes. by Googling Black Hole Magazine, I have the copy. Oh. And I'm so excited that I have it. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the whole thing. The part we taped with Sensei J and the earlier part as well. Get in touch with us. Let us know what you think. Let us know your Master Collegian stories. Please tell everybody about the podcast. Let's get our listener base really large. Thanks for tuning in.